ADCs are ruining the game and Riot needs to do something about it. In this video, I will be going through what exactly is going on, how to possibly fix it and what some high elo people think about the whole situation. <laughs> if you've been playing League of Legends solo queue even once in the past few months, you know that there's this scary boogie monster lurking in almost every single game, turning your League of Legends experience into an unfun torture chamber, especially if you play mid lane. And the name of that boogie monster is ADC. So, how did this actually happen? Why are there literally up to six ADCs in all of the games? Let me explain. ADCs in mid lane, or any other lane for that matter, aren't a new concept. Some ADCs have been a huge counterpick to multiple champions in mid and top lane. Probably the most popular one was Tristana in mid lane into Cassidy. Since Tristana has way better early game, more range, and makes his passive useless, making his life a living hell for 30 minutes. And of course, everybody's favorite top laner to lane against, Bane. That probably was a Vietnam flashback to a lot of top laners. <laughs> they were annoying for sure to play against, but they weren't the most popular picks, since a lot of champions countered them as well, and they weren't your traditional solo laners. So, how did we get here? How did we get from having a Vayne top lane one out of like 100 games into having six ADCs in every single game? Because ADC players have realized that playing their characters mid and top helps them become the late game carries their champions are way faster, and safer. Bot lane is a duo lane where you share XP and sometimes gold. You potentially have a possibility to get two kills from time to time, which would make you more fit than playing in mid lane, but that's the issue. This doesn't always happen. Playing ADCs in mid lane is way safer because you are playing against a singular character. You get more XP and hit your power spike way faster, which then means you are way stronger than you would have ever been in bot lane, even if your KDA would be the same. And now you might be saying, oh, ADC needs a support, they are going to get camped and fucked in the ass by the other mid laners and junglers. Wrong. That's why you only see just a few different ADCs in mid lane. The most popular ones currently are Lucian, Kai'Sa, Ezreal and Tristana. Although Tristana already got nerfed to the deepest pits of hell for this exact reason. The reason why these specific ADCs can be played in mid lane or even top lane is because they can heal themselves. Lucian and Ezreal can E away from danger, Tristana can jump away with W, and Kai'Sa gains movement speed and can go invisible. And because of that level advantage they get from being in a solo lane, they aren't as squishy as their bot lane counterparts. And the best part, these picks sometimes even completely counter the other laner, since they weren't designed to be played in a lane against these champions. This is especially true in top lane, where you can pick either Vayne or Varus and make the enemy team tank top laner wish they were never born. Of course, these ADCs do have their own counters, but this also brings a new problem to the equation. God damn, I'm using fancy words. <coughs> Because ADCs are now played in literally every single lane, how the fuck do you know before the game who are you gonna play against? You're not! If the enemy team picks three ADCs, they can literally flex these characters wherever they want, and the enemy team can do nothing about it. This is especially problematic in a competitive environment, where flex picks are a huge strategy. Flex picks aren't usually a bad thing and make the watching experience quite fun with some crazy picks, but when there are fucking four to six of them on default in every single game, and they're all ADCs, that is a problem. So, ADCs are better mid laners and top laners because they get their power spikes easier and faster. How does it affect solo queue and the competitive environment and what could Riot possibly do about it to fix it? I asked a few of my fellow high elo players their feelings about this whole ADC fiesta and their solutions to it because they know more about the situation than I do since I'm playing in um, Mickey Mouse parking lot elo. So you guys can flame me in the comments about misinformation. Macro, the Orn God. ADCs make melee champions useless to pick, so half the roster is just unplayable. For top laners, it's the most unfun, uninteractive gameplay and there's nothing you can do if enemy has range because they just outspace and outscale you. They win early, mid and late game at all times. And they have a better spike with their tier 2 boots. Nothing wins versus Berserk Rush. I had a game with Sirit Jungle, Smolder mid, Nar top and Kai'Sa bot. We got hard stomped. FF15. <laughs> yeah, they, guys, this is what I'm talking about when they can just flex pick wherever the fuck they want. And I also asked Macro what he would do to solve the situation and he said uh, yeah I can show that um, in the video but yeah he also said um, they probably need to nerf fleet 
Mr. Adsep, the Zabsep Velkos Geometry Nerd. ADCs are kind of budget right now. That is why 14.15 nerves fleet boots and some ADC items. They are too good because the entire precision tree is bonkers. Like 8 out of 10 people will use precision in high elo, just supports generally won't. Fleet and giga sustain runes make you immune in lane, so you can Varus Lucian top mid easily. Soak up all the poke and mages are oom while you are piss chilling getting spikes. Their items are strong and offer counterplay versus pretty much everything. Also, because of crops, the map and movements on the map are more dynamic, which favors lane bullets, prior lanes, and safe characters, which ADCs are. Mages usually have no safety, while most ADCs do. So, the suggested solution would be nerfing ADC items and runes, which already happened, but it looks like it wasn't enough. Draktar, the best Ezreal in the US. <laughs> Bro, this man made a whole ass thesis about the situation because he was super passionate about it and that's cool as hell. He wanted to explain why the situation is fundamentally breaking League of Legends itself. So, uh, so if you have ADHD like I do, you better put this bitch in 2x speed. High ELO solo queue, already known for its volatile nature, has found itself in the most chaotic meta of many years. Marksmen are fundamentally the main character champions. These are champions which requires resources, attention and utility around them to make function. In more traditional metas, drafts have much more harmony and clear win conditions to play around. For example, a CC tank top, skirmishing jungler, mage mid, marksman utility, engage support. In a comp like this, each player has a very clearly defined role within the game, with macro and teamfights playing out within the realm of expectation. This is the League of Legends we all know and love. The issue with ADC meta, however, is that when everyone has the same role of wanting to be the main character, the game begins to break down at a fundamental level. It begins in Champion Select, where almost every single ADC champion is seemingly flexed into every role leading to poor drafting decisions. Sorry, got locked in, is it mid? Top? Is it ADC? This puts solo laners in an awkward position as they don't want to pick melee champions that can be abused by range in lane, so they too blind their own ADC. And suddenly you end up with draft of 5 squishy range champions that leaves many holes in your comp. And I think this is the reason why all of the mid lane ADC characters actually have a pretty low win rate. Due to the chaotic nature of solo queue and the lack of coordination, one of the ADCs almost always ends up in thing. As mentioned before, ADCs are generally the main character champions. They want to be played around and of course not every lane can be played around at once. And so, the ADC that gets neglected ends up running it down. You then find that games are decided by who has the biggest inter, rather than a comprehensive team victory loss. Outside of the outcomes, the game also just becomes very difficult and uncomfortable to play. When everybody is the main character, each player becomes very selfish, taking waves from each other, waiting for each other to face check so that they can enter and contest spaces. Bro, the, I, found, I find this the funniest fact about this whole situation. Fundamentally, League of Legends is becoming worse because ADC egos are too big. <laughs> Let's say you have three ADCs and the enemy has a single fed Kha'Zix. You have to enter a Fog of War to contest a spawning dragon. Who goes first? This would be okay if support and jungle fulfilled those roles. However, if you have three ADCs, you need magic damage on the team, which is currently taken by the jungler, and then all that's left is support. And the final game-breaking part of the ADC meta is matchmaking. Since this is a newly developed meta, there are many, many players with varying levels of experience on playing ADC champions in their solo lanes. You can end up with first time Surrey top into a season challenger Varus top player and the game will just be over before it even begins. But if the problem is ADC is having too big of an ego and a main character syndrome, what can Riot actually do about it? The primary issue that found ADC is dominating every role to begin with is due to the fact that they basically do kind of everything. They take prior early in lanes, they can fight objectives early, they scale harder, they do more damage to objectives, they have more consistent, reliable DPS. How do you even attack this issue? Well, fundamentally, ADC's weakness should lie in the early game. They should be able to get rolled over by strong solo laners before they scale to their role's designed strength, which is late game. Which is why this issue is so difficult to solve, as solo queue games are generally decided quite early and this leaves the role with an almost paradoxical issue. If ADCs have zero agency early and only supposed to be strong late game, but solo queue games are usually decided before the late game, why would anybody have fun playing this role? 
This is the core gameplay loop that ADC mains have been whining about for years. And to fix that issue, Riot decided to make their early game presence and laning much stronger than ever before. Fleet, Footwork and Absorb Life. ADC items now having 25% crit, the durability patch, these are all changes designed to give ADCs more agency and strength in the early game. Sadly for true ADC mains, the solution to this would be to pull back on their early game agency and nerf some of the changes which Riot have already started working on in the latest patch. So I genuinely believe this is an issue that has already been tackled, but funnily enough, the players punished the most are traditional ADCs. So I guess, rest in peace ADC row. But I'm definitely much happier as ADC myself to be slightly weaker in strength, as long as I don't have to see an ADC in every other lane, and ADCs in bot lane truly get their identity back as the main character of the game. So there you have it. Riot has already tried to fix this issue by nerfing boots, runes, and some of the champions, because the biggest issue was sustain and early power for the ADCs in these lanes. But this will 100% not be the last time we hear about this issue, since people will try to find new ways to go past these nerfs by using different ADCs or trying new builds. Bro, they even buffed Varus last patch, like bro, that's gonna be a nightmare for top laners. But Riot has still finally realized how big of a problem this is, and they're most likely gonna tackle it even more, and hopefully find better ways to make bot lane ADC actually the main character. So now that that's done, I just hope there isn't gonna be any other meta-defying thing happening anytime soon, because, oh boy, Ranked has been a fiesta recently. Hopefully it isn't about ranged laners again, because, man, I would hate to play against those. Oh. Oh no.